Hello, Cappy Churches, on this very blustery, windy day. How are you all? Cold. So, we've been out on the market since half past nine. Um, we had a gazebo set up for us, thankfully. And then we were attempting to bring our coffee morning outside. And it, it wasn't too bad until the gazebo blew away in the wind. So, if you've been watching, that was quite a comedy scene. There's me and Max on each end. Don't go, can we hold it up? So that was quite amusing. But, considering the weather and stuff, I think it was pretty successful. And um, we're going to be doing that in the next few weeks. If it's absolutely chucking it down, probably not. But for the next few weeks, hopefully, we can bring some sort of coffee morning outside um, and try and do something anyway. That's that bit. Um, this week, talk about the the vineyard and how we're all equal and Sarah has done a thought about that and you're going to be reading it as well. A couple of hymns um, and for the first time Wendy is going to do our opening prayer. Dear God, we come to you now with love in our hearts praise on our lips, intent on worship. We come to offer our time and our thoughts to you. We come to receive your comfort and your challenge for us. Lord, unite our prayers and our worship that your name may be glorified. Amen. Amen. And now, uh, we're going to have Wayne sing and Wendy play on the piano. Guide me, O oh, thy great Redeemer. It's me, apparently. I'm doing the reading. And, um, excuse the shades, their prescription. I forgot me others, as per usual. So, <clears throat> today's reading. It's uh, Labourers in the Vineyard. And it's from Matthew chapter 20, 
verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the labourers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last, up to the first. And when, these, and when the, those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So, the last will be first, and the first last. And so ends the teaching. And up next we have something else. Oh, it's Sarah. <laughs> Sarah doing the fall. Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever been jealous? Have you ever watched as someone else received a recognition or reward that you expected to get? You had to smile and congratulate someone when you knew who didn't deserve the prize any more than you did, while inside you were wishing you'd been the one getting the pats on the back. Been there? Sometimes life just isn't fair. Sometimes we have to watch as someone else gets what we think we should be getting. Our human nature wants to be treated more fairly than anyone else. And when we have to stand aside and watch someone else get the glory, the money, the nice car or a house, it gives us pain, what the Greeks call the evil eye or the green-eyed monster. This week, I feel Jesus teaches us how to solve a problem every one of us must face at some point, a problem we have with ourselves. It doesn't add up that the owner of the vineyard would be hiring his own workers if he has a manager. That's something the manager would do. And it doesn't add up that the owner keeps coming back to the marketplace to hire more and more workers throughout the day. Any self-respecting vineyard owner would surely know how many workers he needed to hire first thing in the morning. The most puzzling part that doesn't add up is the way the workers get paid at the end of the day. But Jesus is a master storyteller. He knows the way to set up the scene, to grab his disciples' attention. He knows how to build the suspense, introduce conflict that creates a good story. And he knows how to resolve that conflict so that his listeners never forget the moral of the story. And that the moral of the story is not what anyone expects it to be. 
So going back to when the labourers were paid, we learned that a denarius was a usual day's wage. It wasn't a huge sum, it was barely enough to get by on. This is why they were paid by the day, as most of them struggled just above the poverty line. Some employers took advantage of this, paying as little as possible for extremely difficult and dangerous work, although it was not always the case. What was it about those labourers who'd worked all day that made, this, made them so angry when the others got paid the same? The problem was the fact that they were obviously working for the pay and not out of a sense of purpose or pleasure. I think this is a good question we'd do well to ask. What is it that motivates you to do what you do, whether it is be self-employed, employed or voluntary, or whether you work in the community or around your house? What motivates you to do that? If it's money or recognition or the praise of others, I'd say be very careful. Most jobs don't pay enough to satisfy a healthy ego. If you are doing if what you are doing isn't self-satisfying and self-fulfilling, you're more likely to harbour resentment and anger about doing it. So when someone comes along doing the same job and gets paid more than you, you are likely to feel as resentful as the labourers in the parable. Only if you truly enjoy what you are doing, you will be able to not compare the situation with others. Work is important to all of us. It provides our basic needs and it gives us a sense of self-worth a sense of value. So when Jesus compares the calling of God on our lives to that of the workers in the vineyard in this parable, we see that it is an invitation for us to discover our true value as human beings, to discover a sense of identity and a sense of worth. God wants us to know how valuable we are and to do that. The community of God, his people, is called God's vineyard. It doesn't matter if you have been a member of the church for 20 years, 10 years, 2 years, 2 months or 2 days. The reward is still the same. God loves us with equal measure. Your, your worth to God is based on the fact, quite simply, that he just loves you. For who you are and who you are and you are worth loving for who you are as well. Okay, now to Lizzie for prayers. Okay. I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you. Spread the love. Yeah. Let's bow our heads. Father, help us to see that everything we have is a gift of generosity from you. Help us to remember that you love us equally, whether we found our faith as a child or much later. Our life stories are so different, beyond compare. But we all have one bond, you. Encourage us to support one another, to work together as, as equals as we travel on this spiritual journey. Help us not to be jealous of others' successes or what they have. Remind us that we are all equal in your love. Lord, your grace teaches us not to put ourselves above anybody else but instead humbly appreciate the kindness and generosity of you. Remind us of this as we go about our daily lives. Thank you, Lord, for your patience as we continue to learn about ourselves, to grow as individuals and as a church family. We are in awe of your never-ending love for us. Amen. Say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please give me a difficult opinion. <laughs>
I nearly forgot. You did a me. I did you. I thought we were going to a hymn, but I think we're going to a hymn now, yeah. which is the song by Tracy. Tempted to. Wendy's going to do our closing prayer in the break, so before she does that, thank you for coming. We can hear the wind. <laughs> Can't we? Coming through the windows. Very windy, but at least it's not raining. Otherwise, half you wouldn't be here. I would imagine. I wouldn't be here. If it was raining, I wouldn't come. Uh, thank you for coming next week. If it's, you feel that you can be out and about a bit earlier, come down from 10 o'clock for a cup of coffee. Cup of tea, donations, um, we'll take them for that, so you haven't got, you know, there's no set price, just stick a donation in, come along for that. Um, so if I've got any more notices, it's our Harvest um, Celebration Sunday, uh, if you fancy coming along to that. Got anything else, Max, is there anything else you want to say? I don't think so. No, sounds good to me. Right, all sounds good to Max, that's what you want, isn't it? Wendy's going to close with our closing prayer and the grace. Lord, send us to work in your vineyard. May we be contented and may we be productive for you. Amen. And we say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of our Holy Spirit, be with us all forevermore. Amen. I'd just like to say thank you, Wendy Fankenna. Thank you to myself for attending to see. 
thank you to Wayne for singing, and really, all, uh, thank you to everyone that came oh, and helped us lovely. do the coffee morning. Oh, it was lovely. Um, attempted to, you know, to try, well, I came and helped us set up and put the gazebos away and all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you. No, thank you. Oh, Yep. Yeah.